Member for Denison. Deputy Speaker, on behalf of the Joint Select Committee on Gambling Reform, I present the Committee's advisory report incorporating dissenting reports on the National Gambling Reform Bill 2012, the National Gambling Reform Related Matters Bill No. 1 2012, and the National Gambling Reform Related Matters Bill No. 2 2012, together with evidence received by the Committee, and I ask leave of the House to make a short statement in connection with the report. What is leave granted? As there is no objection to leave being granted, leave is granted. Member for Denison. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Deputy Speaker, on 21 January this year, the Prime Minister announced a package of poker machine reforms, uh, and the bill, which the Joint Select Committee on Gambling Reform has now inquired into, reflects that announcement. In essence, Deputy Speaker, the bill requires, and the committee supports, that all poker machines in Australia be fitted with pre-commitment technology and dynamic warning displays, and for virtually all ATMs in poker machine venues to have a $250 daily withdrawal limit. Regarding pre-commitment, the legislation specifies that all new machines must have the technology from the end of 2013 and that the remainder of the national fleet must be progressively retrofitted. Venues with more than 20 machines have until the end of 2016. Venues with 11 to 20 machines have until 2020, and venues with 10 or fewer machines can change over their machines in the normal replacement cycle. Crucially, Deputy Speaker, while the use of the pre-commitment system is to be voluntary, machines and or systems must be capable of preventing unregistered play. In other words, they must be capable of mandatory pre-commitment at the flick of a switch. To further strengthen this arrangement, the committee suggests players should be able to set their limits away from venues and poker machines, that decreases to the limit a person can lose should take effect immediately, and that transaction statements be provided on request and regularly to help, keep, uh, track, to help people keep track of their losses. The committee also recommends that the Productivity Commission review of the implementation of this legislation include the ban on biometrics, the issue of linking pre-commitment to loyalty schemes, whether or not there are grounds for further exemptions or extended deadlines for smaller venues in regional and remote areas, and the issue of including EFTPOS transactions in the $250 per day ATM withdrawal limit. Deputy Speaker, the pokies industry has expressed concern about the one-size-fits-all timelines and conditions placed on the states and territories in the bill. But this concern is unwarranted because the bill is not prescriptive and solutions can be determined on a state-by-state -state basis from a broad range of technical options. And in any case, there are a number of pre-commitment systems already running in Australia, giving the committee confidence the industry can meet the timelines. Industry is also concerned about the cost. But, Deputy Speaker, the poker machine industry is not being asked to replace all its machines overnight as it would have us believe. In fact, the conversion of most machines is more than four years away, as is the deadline for jurisdictions to have installed or upgraded their networks. And in any case, Deputy Speaker, let's put all this in perspective and remember the Productivity Commission found that in 2008-09, national expenditure on poker machines was $11.9 billion. And, Speaker, how much of this was lost by problem gamblers? And the answer is some $5 billion. Yes, that's right, some $5,000 million lost by problem gamblers on the pokies in just one year. But yet the industry says the spending of just a fraction of one year's loss spread across a number of years is unacceptable. Frankly, Deputy Speaker, I don't know how some of them sleep at night. Deputy Speaker, the bill also establishes $250 daily withdrawal limits on ATMs in gaming machine premises other than, other than casinos. Now, the ATM industry reference group wants this amount increased plus a 12-month lead-in time. And while the committee can't support the increased limit, it does agree more time is warranted and recommends an end 2013 deadline. Deputy Speaker, while the committee welcomes the establishment of the Australian Gambling Research Centre within the Australian Institute of Family Studies, I wish to correct the impression that this fully delivers 
on the recommendation made in the committee's earlier reports. What is needed is a genuinely independent, fully transparent centre with the strongest possible research credentials. And only time will tell if the Australian Gambling Research Centre has what is needed and whether or not governments are genuinely committed to fund it. Deputy Speaker, the bill is much less than what might have been, and the Joint Select Committee on Gambling Reform's report does include a number of dissenting and additional comments. But nonetheless, the bill is a significant first step towards meaningful poker machine reform in Australia, and it does have the support of the committee majority. On behalf of the committee, I thank all those who assisted the inquiry. I'd also like to thank the Deputy Chair and the Committee Secretariat for again doing a fine job in sometimes difficult circumstances. Deputy Speaker, I commend the report to the House.